All right, Rod. Your nickname's Rod the Bod. <laughs> Do guys still call you that? I'm like, no, never. They're not calling me that. Um, but they call me Rod, they don't call me Coach. You know, as a player, everyone used to call you Coach because they didn't know your name, yeah. right? You know, I hate Coach, you know? So I make sure that they call me Rod, just to, you know. And I like thinking I'm still a player, even though I, I certainly know I'm not. When you get started calling Coach, you just, it feels like you're so yeah. much older. And I know I'm old, <laughs> but I just, I wanna, I wanna hang on as long as I can. When you were at Michigan State, true or false, your coaches locked you out of the gym because you were pounding the weight so hard. Well, there's some truth to that. What I've come to realize now is they didn't want to be there on their off days. Coaches need a break too, but as a, as a young kid trying to get to the next level, it was like no days off, right? So they just, and they had to be there. So I, I get it now, um, but they did kind of keep us away. Are you in better shape than some of your players? No, but here's the thing. I'm, I'm hanging on, I'm getting older and I, I try to stay in shape just because, and there's some things I try to do with the testing that we do. Because if I can still do it, there's no excuse for that. these guys. But these guys are great athletes. And I'm on the executive plan on the workouts. And, you know, that's a, that's a whole nother level lower than yeah. these guys. I'm on the sauna too. I'm just <laughs> sauna and a coke, you know? Brace the grind, we know what's happening here. And they're in, and they're in. Over and over, 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 shit, that side. He's good off okay? Where is he? Where is he? Right here? Let's go. Cool. You're pre- and post-game speeches. I think your team does a great job capturing all this stuff, right? We get to see you in some of those raw team moments that are like pretty authentic. Do you practice that? No, I, I don't practice it, but I, I do try to prepare. Like, I don't ever just want to go in front of my team and just talk. Like, I think there has to be, you know, purpose. Otherwise, it goes in, in one ear out the other. Um, after games are a little tougher. I'm not a big fan of that. I don't like having the cameras in there, but I do get it, right? We're in the entertainment business and people want access to that. I think it's great that we can allow fans in to see kind of how it works and um, that's part of your job. And, you know, you played too. And is there any coaches through your career that influenced you or? Yeah, every coach that, you, you know, you, you, you had a whole bunch of coaches and some were better than others, but you learned from, I think just as much from the ones that maybe weren't so good as how not to do stuff. Right, like it's, okay, well that's not gonna work, right? So I think you take a little bit from everyone and then at the end of the day, you gotta be you, gotta be you and just kind of go with it. Yeah, who was like your best coach for like those motivating moments or had that, you know, Herb Brooks speech? Well, that you remember in some of your moments of playing. The East Coast was a little different. And you know, you would say that if I said, who was your favorite coach, it'd be the guy that probably played you the most. Yeah, yeah. Right? Or gave right. you a chance, right? Gave yeah. you that opportunity. Yeah. You might not have been the best coach. You might have been terrible, but yeah. he, he, he put cool. Like you know, me. he put you yeah. on the ice. You're like, that's the best coach. Right? <laughs> yeah. So for me, you know, as a player, they were all good. You know, Peter Lively like, gave me the best opportunity. No question. He was like, here you go, your team. You're going to play 24 minutes a night. It's up to you. You know what I mean? How do you? Best coach, right? Yeah, like, yeah, and, yeah. and you win with that. Or, you know, you win, of course, that's gonna help. But all the way along the way, my first coach was Brian Sutter. And you wanna talk about, I thought this is how it was in NHL. Like, every, mm -hmm. like yeah. you don't smile, you know, like, it, it, you're serious. And I'm like, oh man, this, you know, but then you realize, I mean, it's not like that everywhere, but that got you dialed in, right? There's no off days, there's this, let's go. And that's great for a young kid. That's how you start. I think that was huge. So kind of got both ends of the spectrum and everyone in between. So again, a lot of great influences over time. Memory had Brent Sutter and Junior. So that got They're me. all the same. Yeah. They're all the same, man. That yeah. got me ready to go to the American League, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. What was your biggest adjustment as a player and then being a coach? I think the biggest thing I thought as a player, guys that played can relate to this, is they're like, how hard is it to coach? Right? Like, you're on the bench, like, just put the guys out, the good players, <laughs> yeah. get them out there, get a good flow, come on, I don't know, I need more ice time, whatever. And then you realize, oh man, there's way more to it, right? When you get back there, it's like, holy moly, you're worrying about matchups, you're worrying about this, that, just a ton of things. As a coach, when the good thing was I, I was on the bench for seven years, watching all these good head coaches come through and, and learning, right? So yeah. I kind of got this apprenticeship and going, okay, I'm looking, oh wow, there, there's a lot of preparation, the practice has got to be good, you got you got to be two or three days ahead, you know, your pre-scouts on the other team, you don't just show up, right? Like it's, you're way ahead of it on everything. And that's what makes a good coach. So I think I was fortunate to kind of learn on the job, so to speak. I saw this year you're unloading bags off the team plane. <laughs> Like Rod the Bod does everything. No, listen, you, you would do it too. The, the reason was, that, you know, you got one of those, one guy working the back, he's doing the equipment. And I'm yeah. like, we want to get out of here. Let's go. And so I just have to be standing there. I'm like, you would know, have done the same thing. Like, You're high energy. We're, we're not wasting time. Yeah. So that, of course, got blown up.